This is a lesson on understanding how a capo works. So let me show you a chord, any chord. This is actually a G chord. Now the key to understanding how a capo works is knowing what this is. This is called the nut. Now, even in this diagram, it's black. On your guitar, it's probably white. But that little thing that the string sits on is called the nut, and that's gonna be key to understanding how a capo works. Now, to emphasize that, I'm just gonna put a red bar or line right where that nut is. The reason why this G chord sounds the way it does is because of the relationship between these fretted notes here and these two open strings that are ringing where the nut is. So these distances is what makes this sound like a G chord. So understanding that, if I were to move the nut from here to there, which is one fret or one step like this, now if you were to visualize the nut being here, all you need to do is to put these fretted notes the equal distance you had when this was open in order to get the same sounding chord. The only difference will be that it will be a little higher in pitch, only actually half a step higher in pitch. Watch, let me show you. This was the G chord. This is looks like the G chord because you're using what's called the G form or G shape chord, but it's moved up one fret. And as, every, as long as everything stays within the same relationship between this, these two open strings and these fretted notes, it's gonna sound the same, except it's gonna have a higher pitch. Let's go to another example. Ooh, before I go to an example, uh, yeah, I forgot I put this in there. So essentially what a capo is doing is it's shortening the neck of your guitar. So remember, capo is there. Basically, I'm cutting this part of the guitar off. Nothing, none of these strings are going to ring anymore. So it's essentially like shortening the guitar, the neck on the guitar. All right, another example. What if you brought the nut up here? Now this is up from here. One, two three steps. So I'm going to go put that red bar there. Now, as long as you fret this same G looking chord, the same distances away, it's going to sound just like the G chord, but it's going to be higher in pitch. Let me show you one more diagram. See this went up three, one, two, three, and all these notes went up one, two, three. So once again, essentially what a capo is doing is cutting the, the, the length of the neck and making it shorter. Okay, I'm gonna do one and let's see if you can visualize this. Let's say I put the nut up here, way up on the seventh fret. I want you to just try to picture what that G form chord and is and where it would go on this neck in order to make this sound like a G chord, except higher in pitch. So kind of focus your eyes on where those red dots should go, and let me see if you had it right. Right there. If you had that, you're correct, and you're starting to understand. Um, not only does this concept work with a G chord, it works with any chord. So here, for example, this is open would be a D major chord, right? So if I were to move this nut up too, and now I'm going to start calling it the capo because that's exactly what the capo does, is as long as you clamp the capo within this fret, I just put it close to this fret, so it'll be a little easier to visualize. I'm essentially shortening the neck up to here. So if I went up one, two, I would have to move my D shape chord up two frets to there. It will sound exactly like the D chord, except it is not a D chord. It is a different name chord. 
And in order to find out what the name of this new chord is, you're going to need uh, to understand a little theory. And I just put up the, the letters or the names of the 12 notes in music. This is from my previous lesson on uh, the musical alphabet. So these are all the 12 notes that we have in music. It goes from A, next is A sharp or B flat, they're the same note. B, C, C sharp or D flat, same note, two names. D, D sharp, E flat, same note. E, F, F sharp, G flat, G, G sharp, A flat, and then it starts all over again right after this back to here. So I only put one set of these, but it's just continuously goes up and down. So now watch this. When this was open down here, it was a D chord right here. But now that I've taken the capo and moved it up two steps, one, two, it's no longer a D chord. I would have to move this D up two frets or two steps, just like I did on the guitar. One, two. Now this chord is technically an E major chord. See that? One, two. Moved it up, one, two. Let me give you another example. And this works with any type of chord, not just major chords, but minor, suspended, seventh, any chord. So this is an A minor chord when it's used without any capo at all. So if I were to take that A minor and capo up one, two, three frets, in order to keep that same relationship, I would have to put these fretted notes there. It looks exactly like an A minor, but it's no longer A minor. What would be the new name of this chord? Now watch. Before, when it was open, it was A minor. But I need to move it up one, two, three frets. So I go one, two, three. So this chord is now a C minor chord. And it's, you'll want to watch my um, lesson on understanding chord symbols because there's a difference between location and type of chord. So when you use a capo, the only thing that changes is the location of the note, but the type of chord, minor, minor seventh, dominant seventh, diminished, those are all types. They will remain exactly the same. Only the letter changes. Okay, so that's kind of how individual chords work using the capo. Now, the next thing I want to show you is this, that this also works with keys. So one of the lessons I have up there is um, playing a set of chords or family of chords that's in the, the G form, I call it. So if I were to put down my G chord here, with an no capo, I am now playing in the key of G as long as I'm using the number system and this chord is my number one chord, okay? So in this G form, this shape is one, this shape is four, this shape is five, this shape is six. Just to give you quick names, this one chord in G and the key of G is G. This is a C add nine chord. This is a D suspended chord. And this is an E minor seven chord. Okay. So if I wanted to play now in the key of A, so I want to, you know, change the key of all the chords that I play what I would do is this. So here's the musical alphabet. Put that back up. So remember earlier we were in the key of G 
and I want to raise it to the key of A. Well, all you need to do is figure out how much higher is A than G. So here's G. One step would be G sharp or A flat. The next step would continue and go back to the beginning here, A. So from G to A, that's two steps. So if I just took my capo and raised it one, two steps on the guitar and played the same chords that I did when it was in G, I would now be playing in the key of A. So there's my one chord, there's my four chord, there's my five chord, there's my six chord. By the way, those four chord types of chords, one, four, five, six, you can play like gazillions of songs. In fact, those are the four most common uh, chords you're gonna encounter in any key, especially worship music. So let me show you this again. This is one, but now, even though it looks like a G, it's technically an A chord. This four chord was a C add nine, but it is now, oh, let me go back here from C. Everything needs to be raised two steps. One, two. This is a D add nine. This was a D suspended earlier from D, one, two. It's an E suspended. And this one was an E minor seven, you remember? You might want to rewind the video to get these names. E minor seven, two steps, one, two, is now an F sharp, F sharp minor seven chord. So there you have it. That's how you understand how a capo works.